the Maritz Rebellion or the Boa Revolt or the Five Shilling Rebellion or the Africana Rebellion, occurred in South Africa in 1914 at the start of World War I, in which men who supported the recreation of a Boa South African Republic rose up against the government of the Union of South Africa. Many members of the government were themselves former Boers who had fought with the Maritz rebels against the British in the Second Boer War, which had ended 12 years earlier. The rebellion failed, and the ringleaders received heavy fines and terms of imprisonment. Lead up. At the end of the Boer War 12 years earlier, all Boer soldiers had been asked to sign a pledge that they would abide by the peace terms. Some, like Denny's rights, refused and were exiled from South Africa. Over the following decade many returned home, and not all of them signed the pledge upon returning. At the end of the Second Boer War, those Boers who had fought to the end were known as bitter inders by the time of the rebellion. Those who had not taken the pledge and wanted to start a new war had also become known as the bitter inders. A German journalist who interviewed the former Boer general J.B.M. Herzog for the Talish Rundschau wrote, Herzog believes that the fruit of the three-year struggle by the Boers is that their freedom, in the form of a general South African Republic, will fall into their laps as soon as England is involved in a war with a continental power. Paraphrasing the Irish nationalists, England's misfortune is the bitter enders' opportunity, the bitter enders, and their supporters saw the start of World War I as that opportunity particularly since England's enemy, Germany, had been their old supporter. The First World War starts. The outbreak of hostilities in Europe in August 1914 had long been anticipated, and the government of the Union of South Africa was well aware of the significance of the common border South Africa shared with the German colony of Southwest Africa. Prime Minister Louis Bota informed London that South Africa could defend itself and that the imperial garrison could depart for France when the British government asked Bota whether his forces would invade German Southwest Africa. The reply was that they could and would. South African troops were mobilized along the border between the two countries under the command of General Henry Lucan and Lieutenant Colonel Manny Maritz early in September 1914. On 19 September 1914 another force occupied the German port of Luderitz. The rebellion, the Commandant General of the Union Defence Force, Brigadier General Christian Frederick Bayers was opposed to the South African government's decision to undertake offensive operations. He resigned his commission on 15 September 1914, writing, It is sad that the war is being waged against the barbarism of the Germans. We have forgiven but not forgotten all the barbarities committed in our own country during the South African War, referring to the atrocities committed during the Boer War. On 15 September they set off together to visit Major J.C.G. Kemp in Poshefström, who had a large armory and a force of 2,000 men who had just finished training, many of whom were thought to be sympathetic to the rebels' ideas. Although it is not known what the purpose of their visit was, the South African government believed it to be an attempt to instigate a rebellion, as stated in the government blue book on the rebellion. According to General Bayers it was to discuss plans for the simultaneous resignation of leading army officers as protest against the government's actions. Similar to what had happened in Britain two years earlier in the Curra incident over the Irish Home Rule Bill, on the way to the meeting de Lari's car was fired upon by a policeman at a roadblock set up to look for the Foster gang. De La Rey was hit and killed at his funeral. However, many nationalist Afrikaners believed and perpetuated the rumor that it was a government assassination, which added fuel to the fire. Their anger was even further inflamed by Sina van Rensburg and his controversial prophecies. General Maritz, who was head of a commando of Union forces on the border of German Southwest Africa, allied himself with the Germans. He then issued a proclamation on behalf of a provisional government. It stated that the former South African Republic and Orange Free State as well as the Cape Province and Natal are proclaimed free from British control and independent. 
and every white inhabitant of the mentioned areas, of whatever nationality, are hereby called upon to take their weapons in their hands and realize the long-cherished ideal of a free and independent South Africa. It was announced that Generals Bayers, De Wet, Maritz, Kemp and Bezoud and Hout were to be the first leaders of this provisional government. Maritz's forces occupied Chemos in the Uppington area. The Lidenberg Commando under General De Wet took possession of the town of Heilbronn, held up a train and captured government stores and ammunition. Some of the prominent citizens of the area joined him, and by the end of the week he had a force of 3,000 men. Bayers also gathered a force in the Maglisberg. In all, about 12,000 rebels rallied to the cause. The irony was that General Louis Botha had around 32,000 troops to counter the rebels and of the 32,000 troops about 20,000 of them were Afrikaners. The government declared martial law on 12 October 1914, and forces loyal to the government under the command of General Louis Botha and Jan Smuts proceeded to destroy the rebellion. General Maritz was defeated on 24 October and took refuge with the Germans. The Bayer's commando was attacked and dispersed at Commissioner's Drift on 28 October, after which Bayer's joined forces with Kemp but drowned in the Val River on 8 December. General De Wet was captured in Bechuanaland, and General Kemp, having taken his commando across the Kalahari Desert, losing 300 out of 800 men and most of their horses on the 1,100-kilometer month-long trek joined Maritz in German Southwest Africa, but returned after about a week and surrendered on 4 February 1915. Aftermath after the Maritz Rebellion was suppressed, the South African Army continued their operations into German Southwest Africa and conquered it by July 1915. Compared to the fate of the ringleaders of the Easter Rising in Ireland in 1916, the leading Boer rebels got off relatively lightly with terms of imprisonment of six and seven years and heavy fines. Two years later they were released from prison, as Louis Botha recognized the value of reconciliation. One notable exception was Joppy Forey, a Union Defense Force officer who had failed to resign his commission before joining the rebellion, who was consequently executed.